Chalet. Nice amount of diversity when it comes to these maps. In keeping, Nicholas, with the tradition so far, the Nook Ban. The Nook Ban. It stays on the board for every single game of the EUL Play Day 1 and so far throughout NAL Play Day 1 as well. Nomad, I believe, first time, honestly, the first time of Stage 2 has been banned. It was played earlier at least. Also on Chalet, one of those options you can choose to if you want to, like, you know, make it more difficult for the attackers to stop you from flanking, etc. Nook is a pressure, the utility, the silence stepping around, and Asami is one of those very frustrating operators on Chalet because you can deny so many lines of sight uh, as a defender and really make it so much easier to defend library most notably when you're extending around the map. So Asami is a very common Chalet ban. All right, last ban coming in, and it's a Valkyrie. Unsurprising with the fact that we see a very different meta in front of us, the operators that have been center stage, both in those that have been played and also in those that have been banned, they all have one thing in common. They all tend to work around information. Yes. We saw some IQ play earlier today. We've been seeing a lot of Lion play, so don't be shocked if we continue to see these info ops continue on. We are missing a member of Xset. I don't know exactly <laughs> just not there. why, but yes, they are not present. Hmm. And we don't know exactly what is wrong, but immediately, unfortunately for us, there are tech issues. <laughs> I, I it's like, it's whole like, computer like, crashed. I don't know how a whole computer crashes, but there you are. Oh, apparently <laughs> someone said he's stuck in the band phase. Akino said, that boy boss man is stuck in band still. <laughs> maybe, right. maybe they got banned. Oh my god, there's some banter in chat as well. I like this. Ooh. <laughs> You're missing all of it. Yeah, you, you, sorry, sorry, chat. You guys can't see it. We can see it. These I teams are very good friends. I took a screenshot of the... I uh, probably shouldn't do that, but I took a screenshot of what the players are talking about before the, you know, the map band started. Mm -hmm. And one day I'll, I'll, I'll put it out on Twitter. And it's a pretty good laugh. It's pretty, it's pretty innocent, but it's pretty funny. Foxy right. would Foxy would know what it's about. Woody. Yeah, because he makes the same joke sometimes when in the post lobby as well as he. Foxy is a funny man. Foxy is a funny guy. Foxy is a very funny man. For those of you that have not followed the off season roster moves after dropping Drip okay. on Beast Coast, they also dropped Sweater. Well, they didn't drop. Sweater. Well, yeah. Sweater, Sweater got acquired yeah. by OXG, which left Beast Coast needing to fill two roles. So they picked up both Zeno and Ferda. Ferda boys. Ferda can't play because of visa issues. Zeno is on stage, all fine. Mark is filling in as the sub until those visa issues for Ferda are fixed. Mm -hmm. Over on Xset's side of things, they did not touch their roster from the major. And well, for good reason. Since they, they, since they remade their Brazilian roster, they haven't done anything since. That is correct. They stuck it. Well, I mean, they finished in the top four. Yep. And also had a uh, an okay run in Charlotte, if memory serves me correctly. Either way. They had a decent run. Xset miles better than the roster that was on this team the last time these teams played last year, if you recall, and one of the most fabled and infamous games oh, no. in NAL history, but not always necessarily for the reason that we'd hoped. <laughs> Regardless, it's a different look for both squads. Very and, different. And I would argue that they are a significant step up in both ways than they were before. Exit, of course, is a no-brainer, but Beast Coast as well. Mm in much better shape. Where will they finish? That's the question. Xset have been good enough to finish in the top four. They made both of the majors and are aiming to repeat that success by going to the fall major as well. By Xset having that consistency, they are all but guaranteed an opportunity to go to the six invitational as well. I think their odds, even if they finish like ninth or 10th, is still like 99%. Yeah. So it's Xset have all but clutched their spot in SI. Meanwhile, Beast Coast, we we're all kind of, I think a lot of people were excited about the idea that they were going to make top four and make international events, but they have kind of fallen short time and time again. And the thing that I'm excited about is Slashhawk on this roster because he was a veteran who used to play the game a lot, and he had kind of stepped out the scene for a little bit and somehow, out of nowhere, makes a return with some young gunners. And while in stage two, so last stage of NAL, they got, I believe, seventh place. But it was such a close season for every single team that being Very seventh close. place was like one game away from being top four, which one game away from being at the Berlin Major. So I hope we can get to see Beast Coast at some point, hopefully for the November Major, to represent North America on the international stage. But we'll see how they can do in their first opening game against Exet with that slight handicap of missing a player. 
Obviously, you never want to find yourself in this position, but stranger things have happened before. Was it not oh. the Sonics playing with Goddess oh, on yeah. this exact yeah. map? Shelly. And they won. The yep. coach of Sonics, former pro, of course, stepping into the fold to play for, was it Rexon, I believe, who wasn't capable of playing during that match? Well, now so. you've got a former player himself of Mark the Shark stepping in the coach of Beast Coast. And will that same success be seen by Beast Coast that we saw mm. the Sonics have? Well, maybe, maybe not. We'll find out. Either way, Chalet, a map where it's un it's not unusual to see all four bomb sites get played First site to start off for Beast Coast, who will ride through the first six rounds on defense. It's upstairs in bedroom. Yeah, Master Bedroom actually one of the lowest pick rate bombs, if not probably the lowest pick rate bomb side on Chalet across every single region. So, a bit of an odd one to start off with, but they got this Castle Mirror set up. And right now, X set, they're just kind of applying pressure on a couple of windows and balconies and using their drone information to figure out what the setup looks like exactly and how to approach these following couple of minutes. But no real engagements have been made so far, no real damage has been done. Just gonna start opening up the Castle Barricades and try and see what we can find. Spirits was so close to an early pick, but the bullets just whiz over in the wrong direction. I said I have to be wary of these two different windows, one in bathroom and the other over by library. Spirit's still sitting and waiting for the bathroom, waiting for anybody to give him an inch. All the while, a bit of a split push. Gomez walking up library oh. stairs and he discovers Zeno. What an entry for Zeno, but no kill in round number one. Gomez still positioned at the top of the stairs, baiting out the next, and there he goes, the high rate of fire on the F2, just chews through just about anybody but Slash in his rat corner. Watches two of his teammates die, but it might have been for the greater good, as Anthony also gets onto the board with a kill on the Spirits. Yeah, exit quite spread apart right now. Two members inside of Solarium, one member on the opposite side of the map of Fireplace. Anthony, seeking out this engagement, Flashman comes out, good timing for him. Kino, though, stays alive. These magnets will protect Anthony for the time being, but BC, they need to play together as this exit because we're quite far apart. We got a minute to go. Rattle of a flashbang goes off as Kino storms through bathroom and we'll find a castle barricade. Gives him a bit of clear passage and look at this. All of a sudden, Piano is theirs for the taking to leave Surf into a 1v3. Unfortunate for the him that the castle barricade is there, but the diffuser goes down as Kino gets sprayed through. Diaz has the trade and exit with the numbers advantage. Seal the deal with that final kill and take round number one. I mean, Gomez just made that round so much easier for Exit. Getting the two kills only then just to be traded, that's crazy value. Walking off fireplace stairs like it's nothing, and then finding that much value. Of course, Slash, he did get the back step towards the end, but it's Castle staying alive of all operators. It's one of the weakest guns in the game of the UMP. It's not the one you want to keep alive. We see it here. Boop. That's the first guy gone, and then boop. That's the second guy gone, and then Slash says, I'll get the job done here. Beep, 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 beep. Is that, is that the official sound? That is the official sounds. As the replay does not have them, I shall provide them. And boop, let's diffuse it down as well. That it's, right uh, there it's is actually, important. if we could throw maybe like a sepia filter on top of it, the, we could say that the replay was actually from the 1910s back during mm -hmm. the silent film era. Okay. The more you know, I did not know there that was the silent film era. Thank you, Parker. Okay. You're very welcome. I appreciate it. You're very Happily. knowledgeable man, I will say. You are so welcome. No Either way. This might not be where the bomb site is, but Beast Coast will go back upstairs nope. to defend this portion of the map. Okay. It's over top of kitchen. I said okay. this might not be where the bomb site is. Okay. But thank you for not listening. For a, entirely. For a slight moment there, I no, thought I said, this gonna... might not be the bomb site, but okay. yet again, Beast Coast will go up top. See, it's it's crazy because I started it actually, Nick, by saying. Yeah, you did. Yeah, no, this still, is not the bomb site. And I still missed it. And then you still missed it. But that's okay. I'm foreign. Anyway. Did you say foreign? Yeah, like I don't, I'm not native English speaker. Ah. It means it's difficult for me. Yes, no, I know what foreign means. Thank you. <laughs> it didn't sound like it. Exit, same approach. On the balcony, applying pressure on various areas of the map. As you see them spread across, one in the piano windows, two in the library balcony, and a fourth member running around. Surf playing as a library with no Asami on the board. You can't use those keep it barriers to kind of help alleviate those angles of pressure, which means Surf drops out very early on in the round and exit they get what they want with this because now libraries is there for the, theirs for the taking as they keep drawing out Surf's position. Surf repositioning, taking some small damage, running through the walls. The fastest mm -hmm. operator in the game of Oryx. He can very quickly make a road through the basement back towards the bomb site or the position off site that Beast Coast seemed quite intent on holding. 
Hexet, meanwhile, have broken to the library upstairs. They have whisked their way through that top floor and will continue to amass more map control as we hear droning being done. And Yana, in particular, going on to that Gemini to gain more information for Hexet. Might be on a collision course with Zeno right now, sitting inside a bedroom. He's a one-man stand with the hatch next to him. That will be a prized possession. Anthony and Mark not too far off. So Beast Coast will need to be flushed out if Exet want any hopes of being able to get the diffuser down in the bomb site below. Yep, so far looking good right now. Two members on this window can go for a trade throw on, but no, Gomez gets it done all alone. Does not need any help whatsoever. Anthony sitting nice behind this mirror window. Can't quite get dealt with, but they can still force him into the bathroom if they so choose to. Gomez go for the vault in. X sat with the upper hand in both rounds now. First bloods to be found for them. Damage done to Surf. Zeno dodges the nade that goes in. Does not dodge the flash for just a second. Blinded, but unscathed. Some of the wall inside a bedroom has gone down. There's a down on a Gomez, by the way, so will need to be retrieved by Xset. Can they get it done in time? Kino swatted away by Zeno. The diffuser goes down yet again. Xset answers back. Spirit's two big kills. He's got another to be found. Gomez still needs to be picked back up. Bleeding out at the halfway point, but all of the bodies from BC are being buried well below the map. Slash in a 1v4. Sitting on the bomb site as Warden, he can shield himself from any of those explosions that come in, any of the flashes that come in, anything like that, but he's got some serious damage to be done. Nitro Cell tossed out 15 seconds. He knows where the advance is going to come from, but he can't get anything going. X at top of the last player of Beast Coast on the bomb site, and they're up 2 nothing. Exit is probably one of the hardest teams to play against without your full firepower at your disposal, aka Beast Coast having a soft player, because they're such an aggressive team, and they play so well together. They pretty much just pulled apart that top floor so cleanly. The only thing that was a bit of a mishap was that, well, Gomez, he jumped in the window to fall a flashbang that originally blinded the frost inside of a uh, solarium, but then there was a frost trap. That's where he got injured. He got picked up later on. All is good in the world. But without anything really stopping Exit from just keeping on the aggression, like getting multiple kills, shut them down either strategic with like deployable shields or smoke cannons or a C4, they're just not gonna ever stop coming for you because they didn't need to clear the entirety of the top floor if they didn't want to as Beast Coast reinforced both of those Master Pigeon walls. Now one of them are open, but it's also the Master Pigeon bomb site. But they chose to. They said, we'll take top floor from you, we'll do the vertical play, we'll get the kills, and they did just that. Got all four, slash, slash, alive, easy pickings in a 1v4 as all members could just sprint in and shoot him in at all at once. Similar setup as the previous time. Mirror window facing library. Mirror window on the side. Last time Gomez walked up five stairs that completely pulled apart the entirety of the round. If that can happen again, which it should not happen twice in a row, Exit needs a different way into the round. So far, the one thing that is consistent is that they keep applying this phantom pressure that we mentioned in the previous game as well, where you open up a window, but don't do anything with it. Open up a door, don't do anything with it. But the third time you open something, all of a sudden, you're just in the building. So you keep Beast Coast guessing as to where you might be. The Valkyrie being banned, this just enforces that place a little bit more because there's no outside or exterior information you can use outside of default cameras. All right, 30 seconds off of the clock right now. Exit still in discovery phase. Back up top, we see Beast Coast go. Odd two bomb sites to favor, to be frank. There are a lot of teams that use bar as their main go-to. We even see Garage getting a slight uptick in pick rate, but again, different meta. Teams will practice different bomb sites, and there's a good rhythm here that's been had before. I remember Cafe has gone through this cycle. Theme Park went through this cycle before. Yep. Clubhouse has gone through this cycle where, oh, okay, Bakery is the most defendable bombsite on Cafe. Suddenly it becomes Cocktail up top. Suddenly Reading becomes the go-to bombsite for a lot of these teams. So you just got to watch as teams decide to play it. And again, this is the first time we're seeing Chalet here in North America. It is not necessarily a proper indication of the way that this map is going to be played. It could absolutely be an outlier. It absolutely can. We'll have to wait and see. And I mean... If Exit keep winning these attacks, you gotta wonder if Beast Coast goes somewhere else, but right now it's looking good because Mark is the first kill to Spirits and Anthony looks for more. Surf has been downed, but not finished off, so the first the first pick does technically go to Beast Coast and answer back, but it comes a couple seconds too late. Surf is still down, so it's a 4v3 favoring Exit unless Surf can be retrieved. There is some value in being downed, but not dead. You can still hear things in a part of the map that maybe somebody else isn't in. Surf can bleed out, walk up, gain valuable information. You can even bait your teammate into picking up a kill, as we've seen before. 
It's not true. Yogg doesn't say that fight. Didn't know the whereabouts of the member of Beast Coast. They're sitting tight right now. When no one's really moving right now from the defending team, they're waiting for Exit to make the first move. Gomez taken out by Anthony. Gives Beast Coast a numbers advantage. But again, Surf will continue to bleed. I don't think he's retrievable at this point. You're almost at no return. So Beast Coast will lose Surf. It's Anthony to engage on Yaga and answer back from Spirits. Exit keeps the numbers close, but it's still an advantage for BC. Second time's a charm, potentially. Kino walks in, Mark down and done for. So Kino will need to clutch out with 20 seconds left. Limited HP for Anthony and Slash is just above half. So this is very doable, but Kino needs to pick his targets right. Nobody from Beast Coast is giving him a single inch. Now, real information for Kino. Walking in again, Beast Coast waiting, waiting ever so patiently. Kino picks the wrong direction to look. Three players still alive, but all that matters is that there's still a defender up as that clock hits zero. Beast Coast gets themselves on the board. That to do. Kino opting to go for kills in that round, didn't think the plant was safe, and it's such a hard decision to make because they had no information as to what corner was clear and what wasn't. So Kino figured if I can get the one kill maybe, then start planting, it might be winnable but could not find the two remaining defenders, so therefore BC they take it. Round four is gonna take us downstairs to the wine cellar. So Beast Coast, they are gonna change up their approach down to the bomb side prioritization. They're not gonna go back to kitchen one more time, at least not for now. It's gonna be an extension in towards trench and a shield, so we're gonna be playing this extended out towards the trench area. Like they're gonna be reinforcing the dining hatch in this case. That was a discussion on Twitter that we had between the EUL and NAL talent where they're like, well, when do you open up the hatch and dining? When do you reinforce it? If you're extending the way you are right now, I would argue you gotta reinforce the hatch because once the attackers get into kitchen, you're stuck in trench. That's not gonna bode well for you. That's exactly why Beast Coast have agreed with that because they wanna keep Frost safe in that area. Whoever ends up playing there as they have reinforced, they have reinforced off the hatch. It's the third bomb site to be spotted. Spotted. No bar coming out just yet. One of the most played bomb sites on this map since Chalet has re-entered the map pool due to its changes. I gotta say, I, I'm obviously not trying to shill here, but the Chalet rework is easily one of my favorites yeah? in the entire game. It's fun to watch, it's fun to play. There's a great deal of strategic element to all of these bomb sites, and we have seen very similar to Theme Park, but I think Theme Park find a lot of people find Theme Park boring to watch. Mm. But there's so many ways that you can attack bomb sites on Theme Park. Same here on Chalet. The world really is your oyster. Mm. I don't disagree with you at all. I don't. It is certainly fun to play. It is a pretty open map. It feels like most teams in most regions agree because everyone seems to play. It's one of those maps that's a comfortable pick for most players. Oh, absolutely. Beast Coast looking to be comfortable, but Xeno won't be. Twitching away at the door frame, blown up from an aid, tossed up above. Down below the feet of Xeno, but for Yaga it was above. Xeno and Kino, by the way, that'll yep. be fun to say if they ever find themselves in a 1v1, quickly going back and forth with one another. A magnet gets tossed out, but it appears that the garage panel will get opened up easily for Xset. They've still got over half of the round to go, and Yaga's sledgehammering at the top of the stairs will give him a long line of sight to cut off any potential pushes from defenders up the main stairs. Yep. Looking at the attack and lineup right now, Kino has one smoke and pocket on the thermite. That could very easily be the way they can engage this execute later on the round to like try and get in that diffuser because there is a mirror window staring down this wall. Kino trying to avoid the jammer that's next to it might be successful. Yep, exothermic charge goes off indeed. Spirits has fireplace control, can do some vertical destruction to try and open up that mirror window, but chooses not to for this moment as Blue Stair seems to be what Exit wants more. Mark is still here, posted up, and with the shotgun, not a challenge for him onto Yaga. Another tossed his way, but a pre-fire from the Buck of Spirits does not connect. C4 tossed out in vain, shot. Spirits can reposition himself and go yet again. Mark has fallen off of this spot, it looks like. All the while this is happening, the focus from Exit is on getting the objective into the middle of the bomb site, and that's Kino at the Ooh. opening to Garage. Exit now have control of blue, but look at who's just to the side. It's none other than Mark. He'll be tough to flush out. Surf, eliminate spirits. Diffuser still in the hands of Kino. No answer back from Exit just yet. Final three players from this team all spread out. Beast Coast with an advantage of one. 
when Kino goes for the diffuser, being watched intently by that mirror window. Slash can do some serious damage, and there it is. Looking for more than just a single kill. Can a down be found? Surf with a kill of his own. Anthony falls to Gomez, but the diffuser will need to be retrieved. It's a 1v2. Mark and Surf to clutch, but again, the time runs out. Two rounds in a row that Beast Coast wins a war of attrition mm -hmm. with three players in rounds three and now four still alive. The game is tied up at two apiece. I have to criticize Exit because they had Fireplace control the entire round at Sledge, Bach, and Sophia, and they never opened any of the floor in Fireplace, leading towards that mirror window down below. And you can make the argument, if you open up the mirror window, the attacker, or sorry, the defenders can see the um, the breach from much further away, but you don't need to open the mirror window necessarily. Just make the vertical destruction, deny that position to be played because they got two and a half kills off it, two kills and some damage being done all because no one bothered to break the floor above. So, small minor thing. I will also commend Mark the Shark for playing a really good position on the blue stairs. He tucked the corner, had a crossfire in blue 90 hall, guaranteeing that if Exit were to try and punish him in that one versus one, there was a trade that could be had, and therefore keeping the numbers on their advantage. So, good job, Beast Coast. And attack timeout from Exit. Tactical. Not technical. I mean, you've had some choice words for Xset and have spotted some relatively obvious things that need to be fixed. One of the things that we talk about the most with Xset mm. in a in a kind way, is that they're never really out of a match. And timeouts for Exet seem to pay off more than most teams. Once Exet can get their head screwed back on correctly and get mentally into the game, things seemed to work out quite well for them. Exit looked far stronger in the first two rounds, confident on their entry, getting those first opening picks, moving forward from there and using the advantage that they had in terms of numbers. But here we find hesitation, a lack of confidence in those previous two rounds, failing to topple Peace Coast on bedroom on the second attempt and then failing utterly on garage and again as you said you had those library stairs control for that whole time you had a lot of things going for x and yet they still couldn't pull it off so we'll see what vivas is able to do to the team and mm. whether leadership from the team itself can right this ship as it's a second attempt for beast coast on this kitchen bomb site second time was a charm when beast coast went upstairs to the bedroom bomb site but what happened again x set were successful here all the way back in round number two I believe it was Kino in the player interview or team interview right before the match started said like one of the things that X said they, they, they have worked on and keep working on is like you're never out of a game. Like like they need to just believe that even if you're down 6-0, you can still win the game. And I think that mentality is something that's it's obvious, like dull, like you're never out of the game, you can always win. But it is very difficult when you're in the server with all that pressure upon you. You're tilting, you're having a bad time. Maybe you could see Ford or Nate it like a couple rounds in a row. It is easy to check yourself out of a match in terms of focus and whatnot. So despite that being an obvious, obvious fact, if you will, obvious opinion, it is a common factor, a common problem here. Surf getting way too aggressive here, and Yaga finds two easy kills as Mark tries to justify the means. Does not work out. It's a 5v3 now for Exit. And that's another opening pick as well for Exit. They've got four of the five rounds where they've drawn blood first. No trades. It's been quite dominant for either team. Zeno will defend upstairs as two of his teammates have been laid waste to. Exet could very quickly get in that direction, but Zeno's got a window, a couple doorways to watch, and seemingly is unsupported up here right now. Slash the first kill for Beast Coast. It's on to Yaga. Seven and three for Yaga is an impressive tally with, well, still half the round to go here in round five, but that'll be it as the sledge is not available oh anymore. My. Slash is just firing back. In fact, he's the most kills of anybody on his team right now, leading the way at five and three. But he does. Sino is still looking for more. A bit of a slow start so far. Playing in hard positions, to be fair, on Chalet and getting the worst into these gunfights. The ink being brought now. Cadilla goes out to distract, to slash under fire from three members and gets shut down. That's the bomb side control to exit. Well, slash. I guess it's rewarded for those two kills. I'm surprised Zeno has been able to live up top as long as he had. Kino has Diffuser in his hand. It's successfully planted. An explosion from above as Anthony clears a line of sight in, but it's a little bit too late. The Nitro Cell effective at doing its job, but the clock was just a little bit too far ahead. So Zeno will head back to the bomb site. Gomez sees him, finishes him off. 
Anthony in a helpless position from above. Hit by a Candela, follows up, gets hit by yet another. Kino can see through them. Beast Coast cannot. Exit take their time out and immediately win the next round. Very similar to what we saw out of the first two. More confidence and good execution. Absolutely. Still a tight series, 3-2. to two. The opening kills here seem to have made the round very easy for Exet, but then Slash showed up and got two nasty shots and two nasty kills, and really brought them back into it. But Slash, of course, the only member on the bomb side. Once he fell with, from all three members rushing him, well, it was all over. Sino and Anthony up above couldn't quite get anything done. No vertical holes were pretty made in the floor, and the mirror windows had to be retaken from the defending team, which always sucks when that happens. Same with deployable shields. If you put down a shield that's a defender, there's no worries for an attacker hiding behind it at some point later on the round thinking, hey, it's mine now. Sino keeping the frost every single round pretty much as these window jump-ins are a big part of the chalet rework. One thing that did get changed, Parker, is that a lot of doors got removed and a window will be added in. And that's when operator like Frost, with those frost mats, they get a little bit more value on the board. Of course, you get a uh, this, uh, bulletproof camera, and you get a secondary shotgun as well to kind of restructure around the bomb side of the map. And again, with how dynamic this map can be played out, that is always going to be a good thing for lines of sight. And we see now one big change that a few holes are now being made in the floor for Beast Coast in case that same thing were to happen again. But exit, they go library bar instead. They're going to take it over and clear the map up top. All right. Final defense, do we see an even split? And then watch as the teams turn things around. The same score line, that is the real question. Hmm. I am gonna say that with the changes to the meta, the fact that we don't see a dedicated hard breach is quite fascinating. Gomez beheading Surf as the Oryx tries to escape from library, but does not do so with his life intact. Again, back to the hard breach component that was talked about, two hard breaches in the hands of Ying. It is fascinating that teams use her as almost a primary hard breach on an awful lot of maps these days. Mm. Buck also is used that way with the secondary hard breach gadget. But yep. And Nook, if you don't want to use the grenades, and of course... No, 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 no. Yeah, don't say that. If she isn't banned, you know. Yep. But only four operators have access to grenades at this point, so very valuable, one of them not available at the moment. One of them is glass. Isn't that crazy to think about? One of the four grenade operators is glass. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's wild. I'm all Finca, for it, though. Finca lost hers. Maverick lost his. Buck lost his ages ago. Yeah, actually. IQ I, lost hers. <laughs> I mean, Capital lost his. Mm. Hey, Thermite, Thermite lost his. So it's been quite a while where they haven't had the explosive secondary at their disposal. You're right. Half of the round to go, and the only one that was picked off was Surf earlier on, oh but Anthony God. threw the soft wall in a very common spot, is punished by Yaga. And it is. Diaz holding on the drone hole, not the window instead. Does not do any damage nor a kill, but Mark trying to get aggressive there. He gets punished by Yawk. 5v2 now in favor of Exit. Ah, uh, look at the wrong direction. No. See, no? What are you, a killjoy turret? There That's not the right way around. Slash in a 1v3. He's shown signs of brilliance so far. He knows the directions they're coming from. Some damage done to the Thermite. Follow up now, or rather onto the Ying, not the Thermite, but holding onto the mini Thermite charge. It doesn't matter. Kino gets that final pick. And smiles are all around. The timeout for Xset clearly paying off. First half is theirs, 4-2. Yaga is really finding so much value in these rounds in terms of opening kills and just alleviating so much pressure. Like, he got a wall on Anthony that round into the closet. That's going to be the mirror position off the board. He's found opening kill after opening kill multiple times. A double on that uh, basement situation that they had two rounds ago as well. So Yaga really bringing the heat for the side of X set. And that is also why he's sitting all the way up top on nine kills to his name with Gomez and seven right behind him. X set, they're going to start in the basement. Double Rooney really laser gate on the trench wall. Probably going to get reinforced off by the looks of it as ADS and shield gets put on the pillar position instead. Slash calls for a rehost. We might do that in just a moment before we get too far into the round. There it is. We should be back in just a second. Get the members back in the server and we go again, as they say. We go again. We go again. We'll say a basement start. I'm all for it. A bar start, I'm all for it. I might even get tricky sometimes and say kitchen uh -oh. could be a fun stop, but master bedroom is one of those bombs that's just so difficult to hold. I am surprised to see Beast Coast play it twice. 
Now, Beast Coast lost Master the first time, won it the second. So it is, quote-unquote, a success. 50-50 in that regard. But I am curious to see if X is going to follow trend or if they will keep to the old meta game of Chalet, which is like the bar and the basement of the kings. And the kitchen becomes the tertiary. You see there on your screen, four members in the server so far, all from the same team. Good job, whatever team that is. And I guess that's X because Yogg is always well, his screen. Very fast to the re-hosted server. Something that players have perfected over the years of Rainbow Six Siege. Because back in the day, back in like year one, year two of Siege, a re-host would take a significant amount of time to get done. Because players would like go take a pee break, they go get some water, and they're like, oh wait, I gotta join the server now all of a sudden, and then 10 minutes go by. And they're like, come on, hurry up, we got a, we got a game to play. That's a lot better these days. Kudos to you guys. Quick to get back in and quick back to the punch. A rehost right after the first half means that at least the stats are locked in for the first half. Yeah. Look, our, our community poll question about who got more kills with suppressors, by the way. Again, good luck to the statisticians trying to keep track of exactly what the answer well, that one is. Well, I it would have to be Surf because Yogg didn't play suppressor, right? It was Yogg and Surf, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. You're asking the wrong guy. Okay, no, I, I'm talking out loud. I'm pretty sure Yogg and Surf, and Surf played Suppressor, and Yogg didn't. Unless I'm completely mistaken, but that's that's what I've got together. Nicholas, there's already so many things that you and I need to keep track of in an average game that you're expecting me to not only keep track of who was running Suppressors mm -hmm. and how many kills they got. Yeah. You're expecting that. Slash played Suppressor on Warden. He got like four kills. I know he did. Oh, so, so you do know? Yeah, but was Slash in the community question? No, so let's talk about Surf. Did okay. Surf get a suppressor kill? I don't know. Why don't you know? You know about Slash, but not Surf? Yeah. Is that favoritism? It's because Slash was often left in a 1vx, so it's much easier to spectate him when Surf oftentimes was dying relatively. Surf, Surf was playing Oryx an awful lot, and I don't believe there even was a suppressor on the T5, so... There might not have been. Exactly. <laughs> I don't remember either. Yeah, see? <laughs> it's hard. me out it's when hard. the same thing is happening to you. By the way, now that we have the time to do it, we'll go through the stats of the first half. Xset coming out on top of the first half, four to two. It only cost them their timeout. They True. used it at the tail end of round number four after Xset went up two rounds to tie the game. Xset then wins rounds five and six and emerge five, or emerge four, two. In terms of bomb sites, Kitchen was played three times and was never once won by the defense. Bedroom was played twice, Beast Coast won it once, lost it once. Garage downstairs played once, Beast Coast won it once. The only time it was played, and that's what prompted the timeout. In terms of first blood, Exet drew first blood five of six times. Yeah. And what was it, two diffusers were planted? I, I only got one noted down, personally. One might have been planted at the tail end. Right, oh, right, oh, oh, right at the very end. Yeah, it might have been. Because the second last round kitchen, the bound went down. That was when Slash got rushed on the way three. Yeah, that one went down. That one went down. The only uh, the only rounds that Beast Coast won, fun fact, mm -hmm. were not won on kills, but were both won on objective play, a.k.a. Oh. Xset was unable to get the diffuser planted in rounds three and four. Those were the two rounds that Beast Coast won. Both of those rounds, Beast Coast had two players left alive, one player from Xset. All of them survived until that clock hit zero. Very first defense for uh, Xset, by the way, is gonna be Wine Cellar downstairs. It looks like we've got everything in working order, so we'll throw to the game in just a second once we get confirmation. Whee! So a second defense of this garage bomb site, which is the Wine Cellar bomb site, mm -hmm. will come out, but it'll be Xset going to it instead as they now begin their defense. They only need three rounds to send this match away and put it in the W column. That they do. Set Trench being reinforced. The gates he heavily favoring the backside here. Three gates. One door, two breach, two it is, one shield all facing the trench side. So a big preference there. Expecting Beast Coast to hit that side of the map. Beast Coast themselves, of course, there's a tag of still in the game. Could change that lineup. But it looks pretty locked in right now. It's going to be a single Harpy or Thermite with the Dokebi and the Lion. So a ton of different kinds of utility. And honestly, I was expecting maybe a smoke grenade or an EMP grenade, but it's going to be double flashbang here from both Surf and Mark. But a very execution heavy situation here. 
course, Slash on the Thermite did bring two smoke grenades, so they do have that available to them. It's quite favorable on the basement attack, because it's all those long lines of sight you can deny with those smoke canisters. Goma is roaming above, making this rotate hole nice and slow. At the 30 second mark into the round, Yellowpink comes out. We don't know what for, but there's a drone on the ground that gets found out. It's the first drone loss in this round for Beast Coast. They got tons of info to work with. Zeno in, making his way fast to the bomb site. 45 seconds off, Ooh. but long range gets out dueled by Kino. The DMR just simply being way too much. And not a single point of damage done to Xset for that very first engagement. I don't think this has necessarily been the debut that Zeno was hoping for, but again, give pause to any criticism that you want to lay at the feet of Beast Coast. As Ferda is not playing, they are not at full strength. They're adjusting to Mark being on this roster. Yes, Mark has played in pro play before, but as a coach, he is not a seamless fit. He will not be up to snuff like Ferda would be. So yep. take everything that Beast Coast does with a grain of salt. First game tutors, of course, just getting used to the land environment and in Las Vegas and how this all works because playing from a stage like this versus your comfortability of your own home, extremely different circumstances. So just getting comfortable, it's a great start here. Very much so. Gomez with the MX4 Storm in the hands of the Alibi. Nice amount of long range gunplay that can be had here. We talked about recoil on guns before being controllable. That MX Storm really does take off. It goes straight up into the stratosphere when you start firing, so catch you off guard. Even pros sometimes struggle with recoil. That's true, it does happen. E1D gets burned, damage is done to Yaga, but Kino on the move still takes out Anthony. Surf will use a logic bomb and down goes Yaga. He decides to peek. It's a bit of an ego challenge to Slash over by Trench. Does not work out so well for Xset. Still they hold an advantage. ADS is burning away. Diaz's position is safe for now. What goes out next? He doesn't have anything to keep him safe. A third kill from Kino, but that's all he'll get. Mark shreds through him. Diaz on this position, and Spirits with the final kill. Axet gets their very first round on defense. They continue to stretch their lead. They pick up round number five. It's a tough situation to be in if you're Beast Coast because your intro player is Zeno. Zeno is playing Ayana. Ayana is the only operator you have with grenades, and he died first as an intro normally would. That leaves only Anthony and Sophia with any sort of self destruction, but guess what? Anthony was a second member to follow from the roster as well. That deployable shield on the pillar position could not get cleared even if they wanted to. And that is one of the top situations right now. Without the finger grenades and the maverick grenades, you just don't have that much self destruction anymore on the attack inside. So you have to reconsider the value of your Ayana being the entry if it's the only set of explosive utility or only set of grenades, rather, that you have at your disposal. Now, I'm seeing something interesting. I'll use that word sparingly. Interesting is that Slash is going from A's onto Sense on this bar attack. And it's also going from the Heart Breacher onto a Smoke Operator of Sense. This could be a potential rush of a round. I'm going to try and set the... It's gone. It's Oza. Attack a repeat is such... It's back to Sense. We're back on the board, baby. All right, this could be a fast round, so keep your eyes open. <laughs> this could be one of those crazy situations because I don't know what else the Sense would be picked for. We'll see. We'll see. Is this is that a double spawn peak that we just saw happening? Or? Yeah, door and window. Oh my goodness. Come on. Xet clearly feeling very good about this one. You were correct that there is a sense Ooh. on the board. They're moving over, they're doing it. Very quickly, do you want this to happen? The, uh, God, did we ever come up with a name, by the way, for their gadget? There was a couple tossed around, nothing got settled on. All it is of... a it is a mouthful of a gadget. Let's put it that way. Mm. More than a mouthful. More mouth than any person needs, Nick. That's really what <laughs> it is. But it, at least it provides a cool visual from above, as the projection screen, if you want to call it that. Okay. From slash, playing heavy utility operators. First playing warden, and now going on to sends. Really playing for the team, which is exactly the role that we knew of Slash, the veteran. You gave him praise earlier on for the fact that he can add to a team, especially of youngsters. There goes one of those projector fields tossed out. It will have a mind of its own. It gets shot away, but still it stops Exet from being able to see into the bomb site down below. Hail of gunfire going off. There's been no damage done just yet. Everybody unscathed? Yeah. 
nothing's really happening right now. There's a bait execute to see if XA would act and run in towards the members of Beast who's holding them in stock, but nothing so far. They got more to go. They got options. Oh, Zeno very nearly loses his head. Gomez dancing around and aid the lion charged a bit too slow. Down goes Surf slash follows. X set absolutely mopping the floor right now with Beast Coast. Sidearm for Gomez out. Will he get it flawlessly? Yes, he will. X set moves to match point. So it did look like Beast Coast had a strat in mind, but they didn't really get what they wanted. They couldn't get the opening, didn't get library control. The Jaeger dropped down the hatch and got away, but it did look like there was an intent that if they could get into library and shut down the position of that initial hatch position, they could then use Sensus Gadget, use that projector wall to then deny the line of sight and possibly enable a plant or a push, but we never quite got there. It wasn't a rush. It wasn't like a, we're just gonna head against the wall, kind of go for it, but there was a thought, there was an idea that just wasn't really an execute in that area. It's gonna take us to kitchen. As X so far is going basement, bar into kitchen. So as we expected pretty much in terms of the bombsite prioritization, they have followed that to the T. All right. And now we've seen all the other bombsites, by the way, with that bar coming oh, up in the previous. That's right. Just in case you're keeping track at home. It's like a, like a bingo card. Like you got to check, you know, opening kill, check all the bombsites, check plants, check. Suppressor kills is now the newly added one, of course. Oh, yes, of course. You Gotta have to keep that. your eye on that one, don't yeah. you? Well, if this one ends up going into the book 7-2 for X set, it will be the most lopsided of all the matches that we've seen today. The previous record holder was that Mirage TSM matchup that occurred just before this. Has not been exactly the most competitive day for some of these teams, but that's to be expected on day number one. Not just a huge shakeup with the meta. LMGs out. You're just not seeing them get played. Finca largely out. Teams adapting to huge sweeping roster changes, and not just roster changes of veteran players, but lots of newbies being brought up to tier one from Challenger League down in tier two. So with the sheer amount of debuts happening in stage three, that meta change, teams trying to find new grooves, role swaps coming in, it is to be expected that we will see, I think more of a disparity between teams than we saw in stage two. I think that makes sense to be honest with you. I shall agree. Minute off the clock, and we're scouting right now for Beast Coast. Spirits finds one, he finds two wow. in the back of the table. That's gonna vote oh very my. well for them. Could another flawless occur here? Surf is inside a oh. trophy, and he's gonna lose the wall next to him. Yaga's been down, but he can still be retrieved. Final player up is Mark. He just has one HP. Sprays oh. through and actually gets a collateral, and Yaga's still down. Xset could throw this round, but they won't. They clean it up, but they won't. He for real like that. X set seven to two. They put Beast Coast out of their misery, very narrowly getting a flawless, just losing out in the tail moments. The tail, he cannot actually join them by competing.